Women were so swayed by this emotional argument. Oh my gosh, abortion, the number one issue for women, the right to kill their own babies. But they, the Democratic Party has so framed it in the way, these evil white men are gonna control your bodies. You can't have this girl stand up. White and now because women are so like easily swayed by their emotions, now they're just like, Kamala, we can't have our bodies, um, our bodily autonomy Will taken away ever, from us. Will y'all ever, ever pronounce her name correctly? But that's okay. What, I don't, Swalla? I don't know. Did she just say Swalla? Is that what she just said? Jesus kind of funny it was all just it was all just emotion yeah, i gotta give her that one that one was kind of good pals i think you're really gonna enjoy this video if you do please hit the like and subscribe button and comment button it really helps out uh luke beasley had a conversation with this insane jen i honestly wasn't this insane like trad trad wife have you seen this woman she tweeted out a picture of her and her husband and said my body his choice have you seen this one before becoming a Christian, I honestly was an anarchist. Gay Crane, also known as Ukraine. Vice President Harris's big argument was... Bro, just as a random aside, you guys... I have this ex-girlfriend. She was a very um, sex-positive, polyamorous, kind of pixie, pixie girl from San Francisco. I'm trying to figure out like what I can and can't say. Very open-minded sexually. Like, a lot. Like... Like a lot. Um, and for some reason, I had, I had, I think I, I think I had checked her social media just to see what she was up to. Like one time after we split up. And for some reason, I just had this urge. I was like, I wonder what she's up to. And I, and I look at, and, and her TikTok, she is a born again Christian. That's all about that trad life. She, she put like a compilation of like, this is who I used to be before Jesus saved me. And it's like a video compilation of her like making out with girls and dressed all sexual and and um and it's just TikTok after TikTok after TikTok after TikTok about how Jesus Christ saves and Kamala wants to murder babies. And I'm looking at this like, what? What? She's like, I, I grew up in ultra liberal San Francisco and they worship the devil there. It blew my mind blew my mind you guys and then her side hustle is like i can cure depression and mental illness with like better gut health that's her like side her like side gig now she's she's like a she's like a social media influencer and she sells like nutrition advice and it's all about like uh yeah like curing depression with like getting a good gut balance or, or whatever and she's super christian there's like video of her getting baptized and but she's also posting like, it's almost like she's posting like thirst traps. It's like her wearing like really short shorts and showing off her tattoos and stuff. She's still doing that. She's still posting like her, like doing like little sexy photos or whatever. Sorry, we'll, we'll go back to the singer. Before becoming a Christian, I honestly was an anarchist. Gay Crane, also known as Ukraine. Vice President Harris's big argument was hope. We have a brighter future. Hope. Why do we have to have a segregated black national anthem? Guys, I didn't vote. I don't think women should vote. I know we're talking about and you're wrong about it. Okay. All right. For too long, we've left the craziest among- Did she just say that she didn't vote because she doesn't think that women should vote? Did she just say that? Among us in the shadows. The black national anthem is gay. And you know what they say, sunlight is the best disinfectant. So in the wake of Trump's horrifying victory, I've decided to put an end to this by seeking out one of the most outrageous MAGA influencers on the internet. We bring back normalizing the word f we need to put them back in the closet. Isabella Moody has amassed hundreds of thousands of followers by spewing some of the most shocking and offensive rhetoric White imaginable today. Against Harris. I sit down with her. We will have our daughter ready for you as a virgin. <laughs> okay, let's just jump right into this. You have dabbled in um, political commentary, which I don't think you should because I don't think you know. This is all a grift, right? Like, this is all just a full on grift, right? Much. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Wait, I just want to clarify re mm -hmm. real quick. Are you saying that because I'm a woman that I don't know much? Because that's really degrading and misogynistic. And if that is true, mm. you're so cool. No, I think I think I'm it's because you, right? Whether oh. you're a man or a woman. Okay, me, I'm vile. Sure. Let's see, let's see. Here, let's see. This is the same guy who uses the kind of language he does to describe women? Rightfully so, rightfully so. I would rather have a crude, brutally honest man president that says honest things about women than a literal 
as my president or even a woman. Like she's not even just a woman that I don't want to be president because I don't think any woman should ever have a leadership position. Not only is she a woman, but she is the in chief. Freak, no. Yeah, I mean, go off queen. I mean, seriously, she literally, it's known that she got ahead by giving head. Like she's it's literally- not. That's not, it's not. Okay. How do you think she got elected? How do I think you know, she, she how many like I'm not going to quiz you actually. She <laughs> got elected to DA, then to attorney general, then to senator, then to vice president. I know there are stories though. There were people, a guy, I don't, I don't know his name. You're talking so. about Willie Brown. I know yes, what you're talking Willie about Brown. and you're wrong about it. Okay. All he, right. Her having a relationship before she got into politics is a ridiculous thing to say is the reason she went up to be one of the most successful. Yeah. It's just pure rage bait, right? Um, I feel like it's just such low hanging fruit. Like you can be just like even just like mildly attractive and if you just get up there and do what like Pearl does, for example, there's a guaranteed audience. Um, now, how long that shelf life is going to be, I have no idea. Like, I don't know how long you can keep a grift like this up, you know? I don't know. Like, is this a 10 year career? Is it a 20? Is it a two year career? I really have no idea. It's full um, elected officials in the history of the country all right well she became the vice president probably because she is an establishment chill i mean i don't know exactly why she became vice president herself but there is a stereotype around her there's like these jokes around because her because of y'all you're the ones who because perpetuate it because of me people like you where did it come from like where did it originate yeah, so from? they because they're thinking it can't be possible that a woman could be this successful we're gonna go dive into her history and say because she dated someone who had some you know notoriety um, is she the one that has a husband that looks like he's 12? He definitely has a baby face. Like what's her, what's her name? Isabella Moody. Isabella Moody husband. I mean, that's, that's, yeah. I mean, that's definitely a baby face, right? Walk out until my point was conveyed that you do what you're supposed to do, whatever I tell you to do, because that's your job is to submit, do it with a smile on your face. I don't care. And I wouldn't have let you leave mm -hmm. i would have you know you would have had to eat whatever mean things i would have said and then the job would have got done and then afterwards after the cooling down process i would have you know repented to god and smooth things over with you for the sinful behavior that i mean that's how things would have went down i wouldn't have let you walk out until my point was <laughs> Oh my God, man. This is so outside of my understanding of what a relationship is. It's so foreign to me. If I spoke like this to Esme, I mean, like, it's a radical notion, but like, you know, your partner is a, like their own human being with their own individuality and their own self-worth and their own autonomy. I just, uh, this is just so insane to me. I, I, don't, I don't know. Is it a grift? Are we sure it's a grift? I'm not even entirely sure it's a grift. Like, I feel like reasonably sure that they actually live their lives according to this kind of dogma, right? Back before she ran for office. Now Maybe they find a way to put a little pepper on it, but I feel like they definitely live their lives like strict interpretation of the Bible. The man is the head of the house and she has to be subservient to him. Like, I, I feel like that's real. Now, all the elections that she was lawfully elected to or all that she won the elections lawfully now don't count. All right. I see what you're saying, and I wish I knew the exact story behind it. And I just kind of like say this thing because it's funny, but I mm -hmm. there is some proof on this. I can't. Now I look stupid. Congrats. But no one said this about Hillary Clinton. I didn't do that to you. You I did know. it to yourself. All granted, I'm a w stupid woman. Women aren't smart, guys. Newsflash, breaking news. We, we aren't smart. Let's be real, because women, I don't even know what I want. I'm so Nah, it's a grift. I take it back. It's so transparent. Like, it's just, it's way too over the top to be sincere. It's just, it's so over the top and provocative. So indecisive, you know, as women, we're indecisive. That's why I love having a husband to make all my decisions for me. And I don't have to deal with the, but what if I did this and that would be better and blah, blah, blah. Like, that's how my mind works. And But It's Pat Plays says he legit knows people like this. Do you? Do you though? Do you really? Are you being serious? Do you know people like this? What city do you live in? Where are you from? I don't know a f soul like this, but I'm over here in liberal California. So, you know, hey. That's why we don't, sh we should never listen. Small Texas town. And it's, li it's literally like this. Listen to women. Boom, mic drop. If I were to ever <laughs> run for office, but wait, hold up. I want to point this out. I do not think that a woman should ever be a politician, be a leader be president, whatever. But this in this little hypothetical scenario, if I were to ever run, my slogan would be never listen to a woman. 
Have you ever considered that you're projecting? <laughs> she reminds me of like, um, who's that one guy who's like, beta? Who's that guy? He's like, old black man? The f is his name? Jesse... Amazing. Base. Jesse Lee Peters. She's like the female, she's like the inverse of him in a weird way. Where there's just so much pepper on everything she says. And instead of putting your lack of critical thinking skills onto women, you should just blame yourself for it. I mean, perhaps, but I, I, just, I know for myself, like you said, I'm projecting that, I mean, Think about the women in your life. They're not indecisive. They're not over. They're not <laughs> no. emotional. They're not. As I told you before, my mother is one of the people I admire most in the world for, yes, her ability to love her children, all those beautiful things, and also what she's built, the organization that she's been working to help needy children. And yes, there are women that are building things. Like, I don't think I should talk about this because I don't want to get my mom involved in things, but my mom too has built a really successful nonprofit organization. Women can do this, but by and large, there are stereotypes. Like men are better decision makers. They're who, natural who perpetuates leaders. perpetuates those stereotypes, Isabella? The stats. The stats. The stats. People know that women are more emotional thinkers. Like that's not even, like, a that's not like, are you saying that's not true? You don't think women are more emotional? Look at me. I'm being what, emotional. Even what you mean. Like, I feel like that's the biggest lie about cultural norms with respect to like gender roles. It's like the biggest lie that I've ever heard in my life. That women are the, w women process things more from their emotions and men are more cerebral. In my experience, men can be just as emotional and irrational. Men can be just as prone to lapses in logic because their emotions take over. It's just that when, when men get em emotional, typically, and maybe things are changing or whatever, but like typically when men get emotional, they express it with anger. But for some reason, that is not considered emotional in the same way that a woman crying about something. It's just, you know, that's considered emotional. But if a man loses his temper and is a slave to his own emotions, has no idea how to self-regulate, then that's considered masculine, manly, aggressive. It's not considered emotional. But anger is obviously an emotion. That's my own experience. You know, I know, I know, I know a lot of dudes. I've known a lot of dudes in my, in my life. I've had experiences with, with a lot of men who just had no idea how to self-regulate. No idea whatsoever. And the only way that they knew how to do it was to get super aggro, to get violent or get really aggressive in their rhetoric. Again, you did it again. I so blame yourself. You don't think women are more emotional? I don't I Teacher here and work with a lot of young, when boys, men get emotional, they get angry to deflect what they have done wrong and shift the focus to calming them down. Basically, I'm angry, therefore I was harmed. Bro, you have no idea. You have no idea how I, I know exactly what you're talking about. I don't even well, who know is more how emotional, we would describe Your mom emotional. or your dad? What type of emotions? Like, cause, cause even to your point, the stereotype is that men get more angry. That's an emotion. Yes. I totally agree with you. But look so at they're this. just as emotional, just different emotions come out and people also break the stereotypes. Women were so swayed by this emotional argument. Oh my gosh, abortion, the number one issue for women, the right to kill their own babies. But they, the Democratic Party has so framed in the way these evil white men are going to control your bodies. You can't have this girl stand up. White and man. now because women are so like easily swayed by their emotions, now they're just like, mm. women, Kamala, we can't have our bodies, um, our bodily autonomy Will taken away ever, from us. Will y'all ever, ever pronounce her name correctly? But that's okay. What, I, don't Swala? That. I don't know. It's crazy you would say the people supporting Vice President Harris, such as my- Did she just say swallow? Is that what she just said? Jesus. Kind of funny. Myself. It was all just- it was all just emotion- Yeah, I gotta give her that one. That one was kind of good. Right? Because of your disagreement with them on reproductive- That's not what I'm saying, right. though. But when a bunch of Trump supporters vote for Trump because they feel like a trans person is going to inflict pain on them somehow, even though they never interact with one because they feel like scary people That's are. That's hilarious. Because oh, that Hannibal Lecter is coming no. across the border. Those are just people Hannibal being, oh, I'm scared. No, no. Fear is also an emotion. And Trump's entire platform your babies. is a fear based one. You know that too. You no, know it. You're thinking, no. damn it, I can't. Oh, no, I can't no, no. If you that. actually let me say something, no, it's not that people and these, these men and these Republican voters are so afraid of trans people. How old is she? Man, I'm going to guess she is. Her husband looks like he's 
literally 17 years old. I'm going to guess she's um, 21. I'm going to say 21. <laughs> there's, <laughs> there's no solid evidence on this. Apparently, she's never st stated her age. People speculate that she's around 22 to 26 years old. Seems about right. Seems about right. Well, no, they don't want trans like men going into they their. They are a point? driven men, by fear. You know no, that. You're not letting me finish a point. People in it's Min very Minnesota typical. He's silencing a woman, guys. Afraid. This is so misogynistic. You're <laughs> your true female leader here. Yeah. You, no, given your finish. views, don't get to accuse anyone of misogyny. Okay. I know I'm doing it as a joke because I don't I really care if anyone's misogynistic. But anyways, I I don't even like saying the word. I can barely pronounce it myself. It's not that they're afraid of them. They want to protect their daughters. They want their daughters. To I just want to know how did this whole bit get conceived of? You know, and it's like you know that she had to. She has to have um. She has to have like really practiced this and really kind of like honed her craft, you know? So I feel like there was, there's, you know, there, there was at some point in time, some brainstorming session between her and her and her husband. And maybe there were other people involved as well that helped them come up with this bit. And, uh, it's just so, um, contrived. Is that the word I'm looking for? Deliberately created rather than arising naturally or spontaneously. That is the word to be able to go into a bathroom and not have to worry about a man there. Even if they're not going to attack me, I don't want a guy in the bathroom with me. I'm trying to go to the bathroom. That's mm -hmm. awkward. Mm -hmm. Can I have that privacy? Can we say that men and women are different and can have different bathrooms? And fine, if you want to have a freaking gay, freaking rainbow alphabet mafia bathroom for the queers, have your freaking bathroom, but I don't want any part of it. People always do this when they try to uh, advocate on behalf of the view. The whole shtick is about like triggering people, but if you just don't get triggered, then what is the shtick? It's not the shtick is nothing if people aren't outraged by the things that you're saying. But if you just recognize it for what it is, it's just like this blatant, transparent grift, then there's no power to it. It's just it's it just becomes so silly. Like none of this offends me. It's it's so predictable in 2024 that something like this would exist. Like, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Views that you are, which is completely omitting things that contradict their argument like yeah we all have emotions and that yeah. like i feel like this would have been so much more it would have like it would have taken off so much more in like 2017 i feel like she's like seven years too late with this with this whole shtick yeah. that impacts us the reason why trump won is because of emotions from your side or maybe I maybe is it paying off for her <clears throat> what's her name again isabella moody okay it's a little all over the place she's doing okay you're doing all right. She, she, she can get by on these views for sure. I really don't think that's why Trump won. I think that Trump won because people wanted people low. People think prices were high because of Biden and Harris when we brought down inflation faster than all of our Western world. TikTok is surely her biggest platform. Hold on. Let me take a gander. Um, Mel, uh, Isabella, Isabella Moody, um, 10K followers. Uh, to be honest, you guys, she's not exactly crushing it. No, YouTube, YouTube is a much bigger platform for her than, uh, than her TikTok. Her TikTok's not really blowing up. World counterparts, we've dealt with the recovery. Again, I think it's, I think it's literally just because this, this whole shtick is just so, oh, it's so overdone at this point. Every way better. The data show that, but people can't interact with that data, unfortunately. And so they have real p pain in their lives, understandably, and they blame that on the incumbent party because that's a simpler explanation than the one that is correct. No, is she just starting? No, I feel like she started like, I feel like they started like a year ago, like two years ago. I just don't think there's a lot of longevity with this kind of uh, social media shtick. I, uh, maybe I'm wrong. Feelings is, over facts for a lot of people. No, I mean, honestly, this Thank is you. what every, like, I'm not even saying just about, like, Biden Harris. Every, like, presidential, like, new administration always blames bad things on the previous administration. That's always what happens. Like, they were telling women, look at how the women responded after Trump won. Vice they President Harris's you know, big argument was hope. We have a brighter future. Hope. I'm just kidding. Look at how women responded, oh recording God. themselves, literally screaming to the camera, crying. Like she can't turn it off. Like, it's every word, it's every sentence that comes out of her mouth. Is the shtick, like, the whole shtick is, like, every time she opens her mouth, she has to find a way to talk about how, like, women are stupid. I think that's the whole shtick. It's literally every time she speaks. Crying, shaving their heads now. They are now shaving their heads. Talk about these women. I actually feel somewhat bad for them. They are so brainwashed. And hey, you know what? I will say, I'd rather, even though I don't think people can do whatever they want, they can shave their head if they'd like to. Okay. Even though I'm not encouraging people to do that, I'd rather be on the side that shaves their head when they lose an election 
instead of the side that storms the Capitol when they lose an election. Oh Fair. my gosh, that's I had nothing Fair. to do with January 6th. I don't care about January 6th. There are people, the cops, the you don't the, care when presidents try to overturn elections. The, he was not trying to do. What that. about the fake elector scheme? You don't know what that is. It's fine. Anyway, I don't know yeah, what that is, but no, I mean, the, the Capitol biggest police. biggest moment in American history, in modern American okay, history. Okay, the we'll Capitol know about. Police allowed God. people to go in the Capitol. They were bad. Do you know um, why? Why? What you're talking about is when. Tell me I'm wrong. It's the same exact appeal as Jesse Lee Peterson, right? It's like the same kind of vibes, just with a. Like, it's like a lateral shift coming at it from a different kind of different kind of angle. It's the same exact thing. Whenever you're overwhelmed as a police officer, you don't have enough police officers. The only thing you can do is to back off. They were opening the doors and saying, come on in. Wrong, but. Okay. Mm -hmm. Let me be blunt, guys. If Trump does end up winning, you know, if they actually allow oh him to win and they don't steal another election, quite literally all hell is about to break loose. You think the riots in 2020 were bad? Yeah, well, just wait till 2024. I mean, there's not technically riots right now, but you see women literally shaving their heads and crying online. I know that's not riots, but I do feel like people are freaking pissed if off. If MAGA had shaved their heads and cried and said, we're not oh going to have sex with you anymore, whenever Trump uh, lost, instead of creating an entire fake world to live in where Trump actually won and they're the biggest victims ever, I'd be much less annoyed with them. But one of the things you do a lot of, uh, we talked about this before we started, is you will retweet Nick Fuentes even if you're saying, I don't know exactly what it is that he believes, you know he's, I'm pretty sure he's said he's a neo-Nazi. Has he said that? I Or he at least that. is proudly a white supremacist. He definitely. Well, I mean, has yeah. he said that or did like the. So, well, I know he admits he thinks white people are better and all that. Mm -hmm. And so you're going to signal boost that, associate yourself with it. And you're, you're, I've seen, you know, in your social media feed, just anti-Semitic things. Would you agree what we describe as anti-Semitic you've represented in your. Twitter activity. What's your definition of anti-Semitic? It's pretty complicated, but anti-Jewish generally. I'm not necessarily anti-Jewish. I just like make jokes about it. So my point is, that's the justification that I've heard from a lot of people who go way across the line, I think should be within our normal political discussions. But that actually plays into the normalizing of it. That's what Nick Fuentes does. He jokes. Oh, no, it was more than just... MAGA people bawling their eyes out when Biden won. There are compilations of like evangelicals just losing full composure and doing these really intense prayers that Jesus Christ will come down and deliver the election for Donald Trump. There's full on compilations of like the, the most uh, histrionic meltdowns that you could possibly imagine from 2020. Ah, this is funny. And this idea that it's only just like the left that indulges in that kind of stuff is just insane. But one of the reasons this time around when Trump won, like I was so careful to not like my whole thing right now is I am not, I am determined. Like I'm, I'm kind of up about this election to be clear. I'm kind of up. like, like I'm not okay. <laughs> I'm okay, but like, I'm not, you know what I mean? Like I'm fine, but no, I'm, I'm kind of. I'll get by, you know, I can function. I get, I'm, I'm being more active now. I'm getting out there and walking, you know, taking some really good steps to take care of myself and, you know, I'm play, playing Ghost of Tsushima again, again and just having a good time with that. But I'm, yeah, I'm kind of f***ed up, right? But like, I'm so careful about how I present myself because I don't want to give these little f***os, these little chuds, any ammunition. Um, Does this look like I've never been to a gym? <laughs> I got the hyper, what's it called? Hyper, 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 hypertrophy. I paid like $80 for this app. And the app is a little confusing to me. The app is a little confusing to me because it, it only wants me to work out my, my shoulders, my chest, my biceps and my triceps. Like there's like no leg days. I feel like I'm doing it wrong. Whatever I did with this. No, it's, it's an app called hypertrophy. It's from the, from the, you know, like Dr. Mike. There's like, there's like a couple Dr. Mike's on YouTube. One of them is this jacked, he's like five foot three, but this dude is insanely jacked and he's kind of funny, kind of charming. I've been listening to a bunch of, uh, like fitness podcasts to get tips from this guy. Cause he seems to know what he's talking about. It's like $80 for this app because it's like, oh, they have AI. We'll use AI to help you figure out what your exercises are going to be. And it's just so bare bones. It's like such a bare bones app. Like somebody in my chat told me to download it. So I was like, all right, let's go. Dude, he is enormous. This guy. Have you guys not seen this guy? People come in with their stack of ideas and these, there's just dozens. This dude is jacked out of his 
mind, bro. He's like five foot three. He's like not, he's like real, he's a short king, but man, he could literally pull me in half. Like I literally, I think he could grab me by my wrist and my ankles and rip me in half if he, if he tried hard enough. He could certainly rip my arms out of its sockets. Anyways, I'm, I'm, I'm like, who have I become? Trump isn't even inaugurated yet. And I'm over here like spending hours out of my week listening to fitness podcasts. It's so over for me, boys. I'm going to be, I am going to be MAGA by the end of this. It's just, this is how it starts. This is how they get you. This is how they get you. They get you with the gym. And then you start hanging out with other chuds. And you're like, oh, these people aren't that bad. And then after like a year and a half, you're like, oh, I hate trans people. Women shouldn't be allowed to get abortions. This is how it starts. That's why I keep to myself. I go to the gym. I listen to my audiobook programs. I'm listening. I'm, I'm, I'm learning about fascism right now. Feels very relevant. Learning about the rise of Mussolini. Did you know that he was a newspaper editor for, for goddamn communists? That's how he like figured out. That's how he figured out how to be like media savvy. He was a goddamn newspaper editor for a year. And then the socialists kicked him out because he was down for World War I. And the socialists at the time were like, no, 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 Italy shouldn't get involved in World War I. It's going to distract us from our solidarity with the workers of the world. And then he actually believes these really harmful things. And that's how you get really disgusting uh, views normalized. Right, but I'm sorry, but I'm not going to like let anyone tell me what I'm allowed to find funny and whatnot. Like comedy is a thing and I have dark humor. I like to make offensive jokes. I think those are funny. If you don't like it, don't see it. Do we have to The name of the book that I'm reading right now, well, it's audio. Do you guys call that reading? It's reading, right? It's reading. It's reading. If you listen to an audio book, you just say you read a book, right? It's absolutely reading. Stop. Why are we why do we why are we doing this? I listen to a book. It just doesn't sound it just, you know, Okay, fine. I listened to an audiobook. The name of the book is called Strongmen Mussolini to the Present. It doesn't go into as much detail as I'd like. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to end up like listening to a bunch of different books dedicated to these specific topics. So next I'm going to listen to a book about Franco, about the rise of Franco in Spain. I'm learning about um, Gaddafi in Libya. Um, I didn't know the Italians. It was an Italian, uh, like territory and Gaddafi who grew up like in an impoverished, uh, what do you call it? Bedouin community. Nobody f knew who this guy was. And then at the age of 27, he, uh, initiates a military coup in Libya and people are like, who the f is, who is this kid? We have to send all of our money to Israel. Like, why can't we be America first? I don't even all want to send all of our money. A lot of our money to Israel and gay crane, Dude. also known as Ukraine. It's like, I don't even want like. Did she just say gay crane? Is that what she just said? My money going be for money to Israel. Like, why can't we be America first? I don't even want to send. All of our money. A lot of our money to Israel money. and gay crane, Dude. also known as Ukraine. It's like, I don't even want like my money going, being sent to any country. <laughs> I want did it to be America, say, America did you, first. Did you call it? Gay crane. Did yeah. you just call Ukraine gay crane? Yeah, it's just like, it's just ingrained in my vocabulary. Okay. I, my you very said, well, extensive I take, vocabulary. I take everything too seriously. Yeah, you do. What you're talking about, you know what I'm about to say. I actually don't. Is a country that's been invaded and a bunch of their citizens slaughtered. And you're thinking, ha, ah, gay. <laughs> that's kind of funny the way you just said that. That was actually good. Good job being funny for once. Um, no, I don't think that's a good thing. I don't like seeing innocent people dying, but I also don't think that's our job to send our money there. We have people that need help here, if anything, first over the- You know who she reminds me of? Melanie Mack. Are you guys familiar with her? She's, she's something. Now, Melanie Mack, that's a real story right there. Melanie Mack, funny story about her. She thought that, that staying properly hydrated was like liberal propaganda. Not kidding. And she just didn't drink any fluids for a couple days. And then she had to go to the hospital because she had severe dehydration. It's a true story. Oh, the liberals want you to believe that you can, you have to drink like water every day. She ended up in the hospital with an IV. Yeah, I'm not kidding. So, and she crushes it on Twitter. I don't know how, how well she does on YouTube these days. Um, she gets so much, um, she gets so much engagement on Twitter. Um, and her whole thing is just saying like, that's gay. And, uh, and she uses the F slur. Like she's like a big champion of the F slur on Twitter. It's just such low hanging fruit. And there's, um, and, 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 and there's old tweets from her, like archived tweets from like 2019 and 2020 talking about how like trans women are women and we need to stick up for gay rights. And then I guess her husband divorced her and left her for another woman and then she she turned into like a super christian like trad wife 
I guess trad divorcee. She went on her villain arc after her husband left her. And now she's all about like everything's gay and yeah. For these other countries. What first of all, there's no way I'm gonna be able to explain to you the importance of supporting Ukraine in this situation. Are you if serious? We couldn't talk about the fake electric scheme. Oh my gosh. But it our global adversary thinking it's acceptable for them to take over other countries, destabilize Europe and the world. If we say, ah, we're not going to do anything, you do you take over Ukraine, they then are, number one, violating the sovereignty of one of our allies. But also, if we give them 20... Oh, that's the other one. Valentina Gomez? It's the, sta it's the same exact shtick. The same exact shtick. Um, and then, yeah, she, she, got, she got beat up in the primary. She was running as, for the Missouri Secretary of State, yeah. And she basically, like, springboarded off of that into, like, an anti-woke... Um, what is this? Liberal, 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 happy fun, la la la, human smuggling, fentanyl deaths, forced government euthanasia, la ch ch chopping up children's genitals, la 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 la, la 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 percent like trump wants to do of the country or 30 percent 40 he's all putin wants to go further and further the only the only way that's going to stop like his other invasions that we didn't take seriously enough is going to be if we force him into failure but again i'm sure you'll just say nah. i mean i'm just like not a like geopolitical yeah, expert. There we go. so don't being, call ukraine gay then i'm just having fun here and it, they had a lot of trans people there like with gay flags and look at what was his name vladimir Volinsky. wasn't he like dancing in high heels was that true i don't even know if what I, do you that think his real. last name is no, no, like, what was his name? Like, <laughs> Zelensky. Zelensky, yeah. right. It's been a long time with two Y's at the end, which always was like, why is there two Y's at the end? Yeah. Zelensky, leader of Gay Ukraine. If I say these things, like, why is it I so, just, like, concerning? Well, you understand the English language, we, we need to use different terms to, to convey different ideas, right? You want to police speech is what you're saying. No. Actually, your guy wants to do that. He said yeah, my guy. the government should come down hard on MSNBC. Trump did. Well, I mean, I, I don't agree with censoring that. meter just because right. I, I didn't even vote for him, guys. I didn't vote. I don't think women should vote. But, but just you support that your husband did? Yeah, but I, I, I said yeah. this. I don't agree with every single thing that Trump has done. He's too lax on abortion. It's too. not about policing speech. Your free speech rights make you able to say all those things that I find disgusting. My free speech right says that I can call you out for it, right? Yeah, yeah, of course. Right. So then I'm, I'm just saying that I think... We could use the Engl English language best. Whenever you, it doesn't seem like you want to stand by the hateful rhetoric, but instead just sort of wave it all away as jokes. And I'm just saying, I don't think most people find a lot of the like usage of the F slur or the N word as giggly funny. It's like South Park, but without, without like any of the actual wittiness. You, you know what I mean? Like, it's like South Park just with, like, no effort at making an actual joke. It's just, it's just the laziest kind of humor. I think there's people that do. Without the satire, I guess. But it feels like she's like, it, it, is it, it feels like she's like satirizing herself and, and like Christians. Do, and it obviously. Unintentionally, maybe. Obviously has worked on social media. And listen, it's not. Is her YouTube channel small at least? She gets like decent, you know, she gets, she gets decent views or whatever, right? And you can pay the bills with these kind of, with these kind of views. Like she, her channel's a little bit like mine right now. Where like some of the videos like pop and then some of the videos not so much. So you can have a video with 5.5k 5. 5 views and then the next day you have a video with like 122k views. What I'm trying to do is build up enough, enough consistency that there's like a healthy baseline. But it's kind of hard to switch niches in YouTube. And there's a lot of people just burning out on election stuff right now. But all things considered, like the YouTube channel is going way better than I thought it would. Way better than I thought it would. Um, I thought it was going to be so much more difficult to transition to politics. And it's actually been pretty smooth.